a very short time ago that Dikembe Mutombo passed away, and I uh, want to wish condolences to him and his family. Um, obviously a huge part of the NBA community, legendary player, but someone who obviously gave back to not this the NBA, but the world. This guy was a humanitarian, um, but also someone really in this area, the DMV, you know, late 80s, early 90s, playing at Georgetown. Um, so sad day f for his family and the whole basketball community. Just want to wish the Colts as him a uh, big pack impact on this community. And obviously with uh, Coach Thompson, John Thompson working with us here, so we're thinking about him today too. Well said, BK. Uh, Chase Hughes, Monumental Sports Network. Um, as you look at this roster after the offseason of change, just what stands out about it? Um, the mixture of good veteran presence and obviously emerging players. Um, you know, we have some great returnees in Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, Corey Kispert, and then the additions of Jonas, Malcolm Brogdon, and then obviously you know, the returning guys, of the emerging guys in Bilal and the three guys we drafted. So I think we got a good blend of youth and experience. Um, looking forward to tomorrow to get started. Hey, Brian. Varn Junker with the Washington Post. Uh, with Alex, early on in his career, where do you see him fitting in? Uh, at the four, at the five, are you worried about spacing concerns with that? Where do you see that? I think we're, what we're most excited about Alex is his defensive versatility. Uh, I think he can do a little bit of both. Um, we're going to learn about him as we go, but we're ex excited his ability to guard multiple positions, um, to do di multiple different coverages. I think that's where we're going to see his impact initially early. So we're, ex we're excited to learn about him as we go through training camp and put him in positions to be successful. But it's definitely the defensive vers versatility is going to allow him to be able to do multiple things for us. Hi, Coach. Bijan Todd, Monumental Sports Network. Uh, Jordan Poole said after you took over last year that him playing more on ball sort of unlocked him, and you were a huge catalyst for that. Do you plan on uh, using him the same way this year as one of the team's primary ball handlers for the majority of the season? Uh, absolutely. You know, that was a big uh, emphasis down the stretch last year to get him the ball and to be a playmaker, be our lead initiator. Uh, we're, we expect the same this year. Uh, we want Jordan to be aggressive for himself, aggressive for others. Uh, he's got a great off season, getting his uh, game even tighter. So we're excited for tomorrow to get started. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Brandon Scott, Locked On Wizards. Um, looking at point guard, obviously Jordan Poole's coming back. We bring in Malcolm Brogdon to the fold and then drafting Bub Carrington. What is the short-term and long-term vision at point guard going forward? Yeah, I think what we add is we added multiple handlers for our roster. Um, guys, who, we want not just one guy making the plays. We want a team make a team full of playmakers. So. We'll see those guys on the court together. I think that's how the NBA is going. You want versatility at all positions, guys who can make decisions, guys who have length, size. So I think we've added some of that. And definitely with those three you're speaking specifically, they're all going to be initiators. They're all going to be handlers. They're all going to be having the ball and playing off. I think that just builds you a tougher unit to defend as we build our team. Um, but those guys have some unique strengths, so we're going to use them. Brian, what are your initial impressions of Bub Carrington? Uh, a guy who loves to play. Uh, I think that we can see that every day from him in the gym. You guys have seen that a little bit summer league, and you saw that at Pitt. This is a guy who brings tremendous joy, but also a competitor, uh, someone who's got an edge to him, who wants to compete, who's not afraid of the moment. Um, he's got a little bit of that Baltimore toughness in him. We're, left, we're, we're excited to have him, for sure. I know it's early yet, but what are some of the areas where you're looking for him to improve on early in the preseason and early in the regular season? I think it's not just for him, but it's our whole roster. we we got to get better defensively. That's an area we definitely got to see some growth this year. And he's, you know, being a guy who's going to be the, you know, point at the top of the defense, being someone who can pressure the ball, uh, fight over screens. Those are the things we're looking to see. But, you know, he's someone who's got size and length to do that. And we're, we're going to expect him to show that early on. Specific to Brogdon, the, the numbers suggest he's, he's pretty good at driving and, and he's also a willing passer when he does drive. What can that do to your offense? It's just another guy who can attack the rim and put pressure and collapse the defense. As many of those guys you can have on the court as possible. So that's one, one of the reasons we were excited to add him. He's just a guy who obviously knows how to play, but this guy's always in his career has been able to put pressure on defense, not only just for himself, for others. He's got a big, strong body, quick first step, 
a strong driver, and I think that's going to start our ability to break down defenses better. Um, so that's a great addition for our team. Brian, slowly, it's not there yet, but slowly the roster's getting younger, and I wonder how that kind of changes the teaching points and the points of emphasis that you as a staff are going to be making as the season goes along. You know, the one thing, David, I think you've been around me for a while is we're never going to use the excuse that they're younger players. We're going to expect a lot of them from day one. Uh, we know that, that their progression sometimes is going to be a little bit up and down, but we're going to have high expectations. We're going to start, we, like I said, as a defensive stuff. We're going to expect them to do that early on. We know that some of the offensive stuff for our whole team was going to be a work in progress, but we, we're going to coach them all the same. We're going to expect them to compete to focus on the process of getting better every day. And I think that's one through 18 on the roster. And how do JV and Malcolm help you along with that? I, I think that they're, first of all, that they're basketball players. These guys who are still highly skilled, have been through a lot of battles, know how to play. I think they're just going to help us function as a team. Uh, they're also a tremendous character, their work ethic, how they prepare. Those are great examples, not just for our younger players, but our whole organization. We want to have as many of those people in our locker room as possible. Couldn't be more thrilled to have them in our group. Brian, <clears throat> over here. Candace Buckner, Washington Post. How are you? Um, question about Marvin Bagley. When a player comes in with certain expectations and may not live up to those expectations, but has to continue his career, you know, as in a different role, um, how does he, you know, kind of make that? make that shift and be successful still as an NBA player, but just not who people thought he was. Yeah, we had, we obviously got Marvin, uh, you know, in the trade last year through the season. Um, you know, hadn't worked with him, coached against him, obviously. And what I loved about Marvin very quickly is a, he was a guy who was totally into the process of getting better, um, who was locked into some of the things that we wanted to do. And he became – you know, someone who I noticed very quickly that could help be an example for how, what we're trying to build here. So for whatever experiences, you know, him being drafted maybe higher in the past, this was something that I was not, like, surprised, but I was like, this is a guy who's just focused on his craft. Um, and then for us, he produced. Like, he produced for us really well. Anytime, you know, he got in there very quickly, and when I was – able to get him time, which it was a tough acclimation that's throwing him out here you know, in a very short time. He was producing very quickly. Uh, I expect Marvin to keep getting better. He's still a, a young player in this league. He's not someone who's 35 years old. And this is our whole thing for our whole organization is that we expect progress year to year, week to week, month to month. This guy had a great summer. We expect him to come back ready to play and, and show improvement. And that's the stuff we're going to be talking about our whole group. And Marvin's a great example of that, that you know, maybe it didn't go exactly the way he wanted early in his career, but that hasn't top, stopped him from persevering and continue to build on his craft, and we're excited to work with him this year. And, and because of that, outside of games um, that, we, that we see him in, um, do you have an example or just something that, that, that Marvin um, added to the locker room or, or maybe during these summer practices of that, that really has you know, helped the program? Sure, I think it's, you know, what everybody doesn't see, I wish everybody could see some of the stuff of our guys, because I love our guys, is the amount of time they put in, and Marvin was such a great example of that early early morning before guys would be there, staying after, grabbing guys to work with, showing guys some of the ropes, the things that he's experienced in his career. Uh, you know, you don't get to see that. Well, I get to see that on a day-to-day -day basis, and Marvin did that from the get-go, and that's the thing you love about this game, when you get to bring new people into your organization, you get to learn about who they are. And I was so impressed with Marvin's character and work ethic when he came here. And that has continued since he's been here. BK, two quick questions. Um, one, now that you're the full-time head coach, what are some of the standards that you expect, regardless of what the result will be every night? And two, can you describe the coaching staff you've assembled? Sure, I think you, you guys are going to hear me say it's the same thing that our organization says. It's process over outcomes. I'm a competitor. I want to win, but I want to go into the stuff that gets us to win. And what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? How we prepare, how we handle practices, how we handle shoot-arounds, how we handle film sessions. Those are the things that's going to build us to be a sustainable winner. 
And that's the stuff that we're focused on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the second part was the part of the staff. This was something that was very deliberate with myself and Will and Michael and how we built this out. We talked to a lot of people, but we wanted to have people that were high character, uh, people who loved to coach and teach, and people who were collaborative in nature. Um, couldn't be more thrilled to the people that we've added here. I think they're going to be a great support system for our players, but also for me and push me because I think if we're asking our team to get better, I have to get better too, and I think that's the environment we want to create, and that's what we've seen so far. So I'm thrilled to have them. Christy Winter-Scott, Monumental Sports Network. When you are deciphering how you want pace of play to look this season, assess how many different initiators you will have for that cause this year. Sure. We want to play fast. I think we led the league in pace last year. That's something we're going to continue to focus on. You know, I've had a couple of questions about some of the additions of the roster. We have more guys who can make decisions. So I'm not going to give you the list of everybody, mm -hmm. give my scouting port away, but we're going to have multiple people who are going to push and handle, and especially off the rebound to start the break. Always starts with our defense. You're going to hear me say once we can rebound and we have certain guys who can get on the boards, I'm going to allow them the freedom to bring it up and make plays. Uh, the list is longer than last year. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Probably need to talk about players. Uh, Dave Johnson over here. I always sit in the back. You just you have to stay anonymous. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you feel you're better as a head coach, having gone from assistant and having some time as a head coach, but how do you feel you're better as you prepare for this journey? Yeah, I had the – luxury of having a reflection on what I did well and what I didn't do well. Um, I think I had some time to do that in the off season. Part of that was addressing the needs to help support me as on the staff, which we just talked about. But I think it now having the chance to start from day one, to not skip any steps, to build the habits that we want to do, I think that was the exciting part was me is to be able to plan. And we've you know, we're starting tomorrow, but we've been building these things through the whole off season. This isn't just, hey, tomorrow's the first day I'm going to see these guys. Now, we've been in the gym, as a lot of you know, since early, when I started, about you know June 1st, we had a lot of guys in our gym. We had multiple things this summer in Las Vegas and a couple other uh, you know get-togethers throughout with our whole group. And then most of our guys have been in, the, in the voluntary workouts in September. So I think the exciting part for me is you know getting the chance to plan this thing out. Um, how we're going to build this on the day to day, how we're going to build our habits, and that's been my focus this off season. And it's a serious business, but you seem to emphasize joy and fun as you're going about the business. Or can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I, I think for me, like we understand where we are, we understand what we're about to do, but I think there's a great challenge. Um, some people use joy in a certain way. I love the challenge, and I think that's what makes it fun. I, you guys get to know me a little bit as we go. I love to coach. I love to teach. We've assembled a group of staff who loves to do that. When you have that enthusiasm coming into the gym every day, and then we, you know, the guys that we've added and the guys we have in our organization are high character guys who want to be in the gym, who want to work. Well, that, that should be a fun atmosphere because uh, that's how you're going to get better. And there's no way, there's no skipping steps here. There's no magic pill. We're going to have to dig into this every day. And I think there's a joy with that, and we're going to see that on a day-to-day -day basis in our gym. Hey, Brian, Heather McDonough, NBC4. You mentioned the process over outcomes, and this is a similar vibe, I think, to the answers and a lot of the questions. And in D.C., we've seen a lot of teams go through this where they've got a rebuild, retooling, whatever you want to call it, a mixture of, of vets, of young players. How do you convey, I guess, because you seem – you know, you're in it. You, you have the patience. How do you, I guess, yourself have the patience and then convey that to your players? Or is that they know this is what they signed up for as far as there may be some rocky times ahead, but you do still want to win games, a long-winded way of saying that. We want, yeah, I, I think for us, and I think we have the character in the room who's going to do this, we want to win the right way. We're, we're competitors. We're, you know, I think last year, we, in the second half of the year, we led the league in uh, crunch time games, you know, plus or minus five in the last five minutes. We want to win those games. Like, we're all competitors here. So I have a locker room full of competitors, but we want to do it the right way to build something that's sustainable. I think our guys understand that in our locker room because they want to be part of something unique too. We could go out and win a game, and it's not the proper way, and that could cause us to take steps backwards. We're not going to do that here. We want to build it the right way. And to do that, it's going to take some mental fortitude, but I have complete faith in our group that we're going to be able to go through the fire together 
and come out on the other side stronger. Thank you, sir. My name is Augustinas. I'm from Lithuania Public Radio and TV. My question is, what does Jonas Valanciunas add to this team? Well, first of all, a guy who loves to play. Um, if anybody's looked at the stats of how many games he's played in the last four or five years, I think he played 82 games last year. This is a guy who shows up, who wants to compete, um, who's a total professional, uh, and knows how to win and what that looks like and how to prepare to win. So he had some physicality to our team, veteran presence, and this game IQ. But it's the stuff, the character stuff, and the preparation stuff that is, I think is going to translate tremendously to us. And I think he's going to be able to help us really function on the court too. Hey, BK. Um, you talked a lot last season about accountability and that it's starting with you. Now that you've had the full off season as you prepare for training camp tomorrow, what does that look like on day one? And then how do you continue and maintain that moving forward throughout the season? Yeah, I think the accountability is for us is this, this is a standard for how we operate and how we do things on a day-to-day -day basis, how we approach things. It's a, it's a mindset. Um, I think my role is if we drop below that, that we have to, we have to be reminded of what we set as a standard as a group. Uh, I think that's something we've got to relentlessly pursue every day. I think we have the group to do that. My role is to make sure that we're staying on track, that we're not skipping the steps, as I always said. But it's also all of us, and that's our whole organization, our whole team that has to have that standard for how we do things. That's going to be how we're going to be measured and how we're going to get there is how we're going to operate. And I think that's a shared way and a shared characteristics, actions, norms, values. Those things got to be show every day in how we operate. And that's the standard we're going to create on a day-to-day -day basis. Three more questions. You talked about the reflection process you had over the off season and what you wanted to improve on. What specifically did you want to improve on uh, as you get into your full year as a head coach? I think for me, a little bit was being able to kind of put in our own offense and defense. I think those are the things like how are we going to best function with the team that we have here? Um, I think we did the best job we could last year, but now we had a little bit off season to prepare for that and build the habits that we want. So I think that to me it was this thinking about how we were going to layer this thing in, how we're going to build our offensive and defensive systems, uh, how we're going to best utilize our staff to teach and how we're going to best utilize our players. So those are things where I was thinking about the whole summer. Obviously, we're going to have a defensive focus. That's something you guys are always going to hear me talk about. But how are we going to build this offensively for our team to grow and play sustainable basketball? More movement, more cutting. The pace will be high, but we want to play in a style that's going to lead us to be something sustainable. So those are things we've been thinking about. Those are the things that we're going to start working. We have already started working a little bit, but we want to really get after it tomorrow. Hey, Coach, Moises Linares, Monumental Sports. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about what's happened with these Wizards the past couple of years trying to become a contender once again for the playoffs. Is there any motivation when you see what the Washington Commanders are doing on the other side of the street? Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, they're off to a nice uh, start. I know their high draft pick quarterbacks play pretty well. <laughs> it's been pretty good. Um, you know, we're all in this community together, um, all the teams. I think we should support each other. You know, but it's what goes on in our building, too. I think what we're really focused on, I think there's many examples of other teams, and we're always going to be supportive, especially the D.C. teams. But what can we control on a day-to-day -day basis? Those are things we're working on and thinking about. Um, but it's nice to see commanders playing well. Brian, apart from putting the ball in Jordan's hands more often, uh, how, what did you do in terms of your messaging to him to help unlock him? Jordan unlocked himself. Um, you know, we stylistically gave him the ball, but I just wanted Jordan to be himself. Um, this is a guy who's already had a great career. I just wanted to remind him that that's who he is, and we're going to give you the ball to go do that. And I'm going to expect more in him to be better this year. So to me, it was just a little bit stylistically, but also a reminder, like, you're a really good player. You're a really accomplished player. You put a tremendous amount of time and work into your craft, and I've been around a lot of guys in my career. He is top of the food chain in terms of preparation and the work that he puts in. Go be yourself, and that's how we're going to expect him this year. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate everybody coming out today. Really good players will be coming soon, but appreciate everybody coming out. Good seeing everybody. I uh, hope you guys had a nice off season. I'm sure we'll 
getting to see you much more now. Thanks.